Detroit Become Human was uh, produced over a period of four years. Here in Paris, we have a team of about 180 people. And to that, we need to add also all the outsourcing with our partners in the Philippines, in China, Vietnam, and in India. So when we started working on this story, I had to um, imagine where Cara was built. And um, for whatever reason, the city of Detroit came very quickly to my mind because it had already an incredible story by itself of, uh, of history and themes. So we traveled there with the team and we were really moved by what we saw and we could really um, feel the desire to fight and, and really uh, be born again. And we just continued this curve, this growth, and just imagine what Detroit would be like if the Android industry was, um, you know, using these huge factories to build androids there. A very strong element in Detroit is that there's a lot of industrial wasteland and a lot of nature too. And for us, the graphic designers, it was an incredible playground. The destroyed zones which we wanted to preserve, we appropriated them to turn into something else. Then in the areas that needed to be rebuilt, we were able to imagine our Detroit of the future. We didn't want to make a science fiction universe, but a world of anticipation. If we chose science fiction, we could have imagined flying cars, extraterrestrials, but those things are very far from our current everyday life. Anticipation is more about gleaning from our contemporary reality, the one we know, because Detroit is set in 2038, and 2038 is tomorrow. The difficulty we had was sticking to reality, that is to say, technology becoming more and more invisible, a lot more elegant, and at the same time, making it visual. So all the computer equipment, autonomous cars, we simply had to invent. They are in fact very technological objects, but at the same time remain very credible and ingrained in reality. To create a cohesive universe in the fashion and clothing of the human characters in 2038, I didn't want to put an accent on strange shapes, or really vibrant colors, and things we wouldn't know. That I wanted to keep for the androids. The goal was to create something familiar which we can identify with in this future setting. Working on the artistic direction for the androids was a bit special because this is a project about the place they could occupy in the human world. It was out of the question for them to be too beautiful or too perfect. They had to correspond to every social class, rich and poor. Inspired by everyday utilitarian clothes, I brought a modern touch by adding dynamic display surfaces, the armband we can see on the side, the triangle on the front and back, and LED. Like that, there's no confusion. Wait. You're just an android? All right, ma'am. We need you, to go. You can't do that. You... Why aren't you sending a real person? Once we cast the actors, we travel to meet them in order to scan their faces. We record the structure of their face with the scan. And we record the colors and patches of skin with photography. Once we have this information, we will use this as a basis for modeling and creating the characters. The artist will make it more realistic, but will also enrich it. He will propose ideas which we will develop together. Finally, we will have a character with character who corresponds to the project in the world. When the actors come to Quantic Dream, we show them the design, what their image will be, and what they will look like in the game. This extra information gives them another dimension and color to connect with emotionally. It helps them think about how to play their character. Your mission, that's all you care about, huh? You should consult a professional who can help you. Beat it, you hear me? Get the hell out!